Greetings, fellow medical professionals. In this episode, we will be delving into the intricate world of pneumonia. As healthcare experts, understanding the pathophysiology, different types based on anatomy and setting, causative organisms, signs and symptoms, clinical examination, diagnostic investigations, the CURB-65 score to assess severity, treatment options, and potential complications is vital for effectively managing this respiratory condition. So, let's get started. Pneumonia is an acute inflammatory condition of the lungs primarily affecting the alveoli. When inhaled microorganisms, such as bacteria, viruses, or fungi, bypass the upper respiratory tract defenses, they enter the lower respiratory tract, reaching the alveoli. In response to the invading pathogens, the body activates an immune response, leading to the accumulation of inflammatory cells, fluid, and debris within the alveoli. This causes consolidation and impairs oxygen diffusion, resulting in hypoxemia and the hallmark symptoms of pneumonia. Pneumonia can be classified based on anatomical distribution and the setting in which it is acquired. Based on the anatomical distribution, we have two main types, bronchopneumonia and lober pneumonia. Bronchopneumonia involves patchy, multifocal, and scattered inflammation affecting both lungs. It begins in the bronchi and bronchioles and then spreads to the alveoli, resulting in a diffuse pattern of infection. In contrast, lober pneumonia is characterized by consolidation of an entire lobe or a significant portion of one or both lungs. It typically presents as a more localized infection. Pneumonia can also be classified based on the setting in which it is acquired. Community-acquired pneumonia occurs outside of healthcare facilities and is typically caused by common bacterial pathogens like Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, and atypical organisms like Mycoplasma pneumoniae. Hospital-acquired pneumonia occurs more than 48 hours after hospital admission and is usually associated with multidrug-resistant organisms, such as methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA, or gram-negative bacteria like Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Aspiration pneumonia results from the inhalation of oropharyngeal secretions or gastric contents. It can lead to infections by anaerobic bacteria like Bacteroides fragilis or Streptococcus pneumoniae. The causative organisms of pneumonia vary depending on the type and setting. These include bacteria, viruses and rare cases fungi. Common bacterial pathogens causing pneumonia include Streptococcus pneumoniae, most prevalent in community-acquired pneumonia cases. Haemophilus influenza, often seen in patients with underlying lung diseases. Staphylococcus aureus, including methicillin-resistant strains in hospital-acquired pneumonia settings. Klebsiella pneumoniae and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, commonly associated with severe hospital-acquired pneumonia cases and those with risk factors. Viral pneumonia is mainly caused by influenza viruses, respiratory syncytial virus, and coronaviruses like SARS-CoV-2. Fungal pneumonia is less common and predominantly affects immunocompromised individuals. Examples include congida species and aspergillus. Recognizing the signs and symptoms of pneumonia is crucial for early diagnosis and prompt treatment. Common clinical features include fever and chills, productive cough with purulent sputum, dyspnea or rapid and shallow breathing, pleuritic chest pain, crackles or decreased breath sounds on auscultation, and cyanosis in severe cases. A thorough clinical examination and appropriate diagnostic investigations are essential to confirm pneumonia. Clinical examination involves auscultation, percussion, and palpation of the chest to identify abnormal lung sounds and signs of consolidation. Diagnostic investigations may include chest x-ray or CT scan to assess lung involvement and consolidation, sputum culture and gram stain to identify the causative organism, Blood tests, including complete blood count and inflammatory markers. To assess the severity of pneumonia and guide treatment decisions, the CURB-65 score is widely used. CURB-65 evaluates five criteria, confusion, urea, blood urea nitrogen level, respiratory rate, blood pressure, age. Each criterion receives one point if present, and the total score helps categorize the severity of pneumonia. CURB-65 score of 0 to 1 indicates low severity, patients may be managed as an outpatient. CURB-65 score of 2 indicates moderate severity, patients may require hospitalization. And CURB-65 score of 3 to 5 indicates high severity, usually necessitates immediate hospitalization. Treatment options depend on the causative organism and patient factors. For bacterial pneumonia, empirical antibiotic therapy should cover common pathogens based on the setting. 
adjustments can be made based on culture results and patient response. For viral pneumonia antiviral agents may be used for specific viral infections, such as influenza and COVID-19. Antifungal therapy is crucial for treating fungal pneumonias. Supportive care, including oxygen therapy and proper hydration, should also be provided. Pneumonia can lead to various complications, especially in severe or inadequately treated cases. These include, respiratory failure and acute respiratory distress syndrome, pleural effusion and empyema, septicemia and septic shock, lung abscesses and necrotizing pneumonia. As medical professionals, our vigilance and prompt intervention can significantly improve patient outcomes. Pneumonia is a serious condition, but with early diagnosis and proper treatment, most people recover fully. If you or someone you know experiences symptoms, seek medical help immediately. Stay informed, stay healthy, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more valuable medical content. Take care, and see you next time.